What's up, everyone? We are live at 5. It's Thursday, October 3rd. We're, you can't tell, but we're in the heart of Times Square at Broadway.com. I'm Paul Wontorek. <laughs> and I'm Ryan Lee Gilbert. And we're joined by Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. Giving jazz hands, as always. As always. Yes. Like she does on every Thursday. <laughs> And Monday. <laughs> and Tuesday. And Wednesday. Yes, Friday. Uh, hey, Ryan. Yeah. So I saw this great new play last night you at Manhattan did. Theater Club. Yes, you Called did. The New Englanders. Mm -hmm. And Kara Young. Yes. Who's fantastic yes. in it is our guest today. So exciting. It was opening night. So I'm excited to talk to her all about it. But first, today's top five. And we found out who is going to be helping bring in To Kill a Mockingbird's second year on Broadway. Yes, yeah, some really big casting news this morning. It's like a reboot. It is. So yeah, so year it's going to be year two of To Kill a Mockingbird okay. over yep. at the Schubert Theater. We already knew that Ed Harris is going to yes. be taking over for Jeff Daniels, and Nick Robinson, Love, Simon star, is going to be taking over the role of Jem. Mm -hmm. But now we found out who will be joining everyone over there. Why didn't the... you mention Stepmom for Ed Harris if you were going to mention right. Love, Simon? Have, you're right. I, I could have mentioned Stepmom. I'm like sorry. Step I love a lot of Ed no, Harris I, I love Stepmom sorry. as well. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, but some really exciting people. So we have um, Nina. Anna Grohlman will be taking over the role of Scout. Taylor Trench will be going on as Dill. And Kyle Scatliff will be taking over as Tom Robinson. As, alongside Eliza Scanlon, who if you watched Sharp Objects... Did you watch Sharp Objects? Yes. She was incredible. She was the daughter. She was Amy Adams' little sister. Right? She's she going to be so, Mayella. She's, she's going to be Mayella. Uh, Lisa Gay Hamilton will be Calpurnia. Oh, and Russell Harvard will be playing Link Dees and Boo Radley. Caitlin Moynihan, you have, a, you have a little tidbit about an interesting... I love Russell. Yeah. I, saw, well, I saw him in King Lear. Absolutely. And he is a deaf actor. Right. And I just love that this he's continuing to get cool. acting roles in characters that aren't necessarily deaf themselves. Absolutely. Yeah. And that I just, cool. I just love that. That he's just continuing to get awesome work that doesn't that isn't defined by his hard of hearing. That's right. Well done yeah, over there at Mockingbird. Um, a lot. There are many other people. Uh, Manuel Felciano, M. Emmett Walsh, William Humans, Patricia Connolly, Christopher Invar, Rosalind Coleman, Jean Gillette, Luke Smith, and Yagel T. Welch are also all joining but the cast. But what's going on with Neil Huff? Neil Huff. He's sticking around, but he's going to be playing Bob Ewell. Because he was Link Dees. He was Link right? Dees, but now he'll be playing Bob Ewell. Uh, and Ted Koch will be taking over the role of Mr. Cunningham, Cunningham as well. Um, all, of the, all of the people that are currently in the show, um, they will be playing their last performance on November 3rd, and then all of the new cast members will join the show on November 5th. Wow. So very exciting wow. stuff. Wow, it's a yeah. lot. And I found my new TV, favorite TV show, and it hasn't even started yet. I love Bernadette Peters. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Right? She's yeah. going to be on TV, guys. So they're yeah, making a spinoff to the CW hit Riverdale. Yeah. And it's called Katie Keene. Yeah. Now, is Katie Keene a character from Riverdale? She is. Because I watched the, the first not couple from the seasons. TV show, okay. but she's a character in the comic. She's comics. related to Archie? I be, she's like a. I don't mean to quiz you. I'm no, sorry. Right. You just normally I know. know. I don't know if she's. She I might be like a cousin, cousin or something. Okay. Well, yeah. Either cousin. way, Bernadette Peters has nothing to do with her because she is playing the mother to Pepper Smith. Yes, Pepper Smith is okay. one of Katie Keene's friends. Julia Chan. Um, and yeah. her name is Miss Freesia, like the flower, I guess. Oh, okay. And she's a close friend. So so she's the mother. Okay. But yeah. you know, but this is interesting because also they're getting all my favorite Broadway divas to play the moms on this show. Uh, uh, because no we kidding. already said that Daphne Rubin Vega yep. is also on it playing Louisa. And we're yes. getting we're getting a hand from Carol because <laughs> I love her too. Yeah. Um so this is cool. So which other Broadway divas will get cast? In the PTA group of Katie Keene, we're not sure, but TBD. Stay tuned. <laughs> And a hilarious Star Wars parody from The Mind of a Broadway Star is heading to 54 Below. Yes, if you have taken the time to follow Andrew Barth Feldman on Twitter, he talks about his love of Star Wars uh -huh. and his wanting to do a musical version of it for a very, very long time. And now, it's kind of happening. So well, but he did it already. He's done it already, so but he did it in this. eighth. This is cute. He did it in eighth grade. He, <laughs> uh, he and his friend, um, I have his name up here, um, uh, Adrian Dixon. So he uh, and they wrote this parody in eighth grade. Of the, and they had the rights, of course. Of course, that takes <laughs> Star Wars A New Hope <laughs> and, and takes their love of that and musical theater and then middle middle grade humor and combines it all together. And they loved it. And now they got a lot of like their friends. They're to doing it again. They're going right? to do, do a concert version of this. It's called SW. 
a newsical hope, uh -huh. and it's happening at Feinstein's 54 Below on February 9th of 2020 at 7 p.m. and 9.30 p.m., and lots of friends are joining them. Drew Galing, Wesley Taylor, Jason Gote, Natalie Walker, Antonio Cipriano, Heath Saunders, Nathan Fossbender, and so many of his friends over at Dear Evan Hansen, Alex Boniello, Sky Lakota Lynch, Gabrielle Caruba, Phoenix Best, Josh Strobel, Dan Mack, Roman Banks, and Diamond Essence Are they all going to fit in that? Uh, there, are, I mean, there are a lot of, uh, true, yeah, I'm sure they'll fit. There are a lot of characters in Star Wars, so you, you know, need a lot of people. You know, if you call it SW, you don't need the rides. That's right. Ooh. Sorry, it's the SW. It's not, SW. Yeah. Uh, the musical. Uh, uh, the evening's proceeds from these concerts will be donated to Next for Autism which is amazing. Cool. Um, and so, yeah, additional casting for this will be announced soon, but you are going to want to get your tickets yeah. for SW, A Newsicle Hope. <laughs> and Cynthia Revo is booked and busy, and we are blessed because of it. <laughs> okay, so Cynthia Revo is already getting Oscar buzz yes. Yes. because Harriet uh, her Harriet Tubman movie it, it had a huge uh, debut up at the Toronto Film Festival. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So suddenly, you know, it's all happening. Yeah. Just cross your fingers. We're very excited for her. Mm -hmm. th wait, that would he got her, right? It would he got her. Just, I don't mean to yes. like get ahead of myself. It but, would, though. But anyway, mm -hmm. so National Geographic does this show called Genius, and yes. every season they cover a different like, genius. Picasso? So right, yeah. so they did Jeffrey Rush did Einstein, and then Antonio Banderas did Picasso. Yes, which is incredible. And they were supposed to do a Mary Shelley season, right? But I guess they what were like, I guess they started writing it, and they were like, "This isn't very interesting. Let's just do Aretha Franklin." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I love that they went from Einstein to Picasso to Aretha <laughs> Franklin. So Absolutely now I'm gonna watch it. it. So congratulations, yeah. National Geographic, because now you're gonna get me <laughs> yeah, to watch now it. Now you got it. And yeah. they cast Cynthia Erivo as That's Aretha amazing. Franklin. So Erivo will play the Queen of Soul throughout the season. Mm -hmm. um, and Susan Laurie Parks, which is the Pulitzer Prize winning playwright, we're yes. getting more hand waves from yes. Kara. Yes. Um, she is like, she's writing it, yeah. which is which is great. So this is probably going to be pretty incredible. CT. Now, Cynthia Revo doesn't need an Emmy, but she maybe can get another hey, one. She's got shelf she space, I'm <laughs> sure. Yeah, <laughs> fill it up. And it's time to get in, losers, because we are taking you across the country with Mean Girls. Yes, happy Mean Girls Day, October 3rd oh, out there, Oh, happy Columbia. Mean Girls Day. And very exciting, Mariah Rose Faith, who you may know, she was a member of Team Star Kid, which Ooh. Darren Chris, obviously, you know. Um, uh, also, she has an incredible YouTube channel. She's playing Regina George in the Mean Girls Tour, and she is our newest vlogger. Wow. Her vlog is going to be starting on October 11th. It's called Get In Losers. Um, and she's going to be That's taking a quote. A, that is a quote. No, I believe from the out. movie. Yeah, so, I mean, there's all sorts of cross-referencing sure. here. Uh, the tour launched on September 21st in Buffalo, New York. It is headed to 25 cities across the country over the next season. Um, so this uh, it'll premiere on October 11th and will be on every other Friday. Okay. So it's a bi-monthly vlog. Um, very exciting. Happy to have her vlogging cool. for us. Couldn't bi-monthly also mean every other month? It could, but I think, I don't know. Who I'm knows? Sorry. Who knows? I hate that word. I, Yeah, I do too. I hate bi-weekly more. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> also on the site, you yeah. you interviewed the stars of the Jesus Christ Superstar Yes, tour. James Delisco Beeks, who is Judas, uh, Jenna Rubai, who's playing Mary Magdalene, and Aaron Levine as Jesus Christ. We interviewed all of them, took gorgeous photos of mm -hmm. them. You can get to know a little about them. Right. This new rock interpretation of Jesus Christ Superstar. Uh -huh. Where yeah. are we going to see that? We need to go see that. I know. Tomorrow. We need to pick a city. Somewhere. Go. Pick a city. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, and also city. all about that base, about that base. Yes. The episode six of Jawan M. Jackson's vlog. He was on vacay. vacay. It's literally a vacation it's, episode. Yeah, he was in Aruba. So Just jealous. Good angry. for him. At least he didn't drop it like in February. We would have been more annoyed. <laughs> yeah, that would have been very uh, yeah. And also a character study the, with uh, yes. Patty Murin. As Anna. Anna Frozen. over it's at beautiful. Frozen. The, the Disney character study series is still going. Yeah. Still a couple happening. more to go. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Ryan. My pleasure. Thank That's you for it stopping for me. in. Yeah, hey, totally. Caitlin, tell everyone about today's guest. Gladly. Yes, we have Miss Carrie Young here with us in the studio. She's currently appearing in Manhattan Theater Cubs, The New Englanders, which just had its opening night last night. So she's a rock star for being here today. She, we're going to talk all about that. Some of her stage credits include Revolving Cycles Truly, Steadily Rolled, The Public's uh, Colored Water, Sinking Ink, and a lot more. Thank you. Uh, and we're so excited to just talk all about her incredible career and what it's like to be in this wow. awesome production. Follow her on so social media at Kara Actor, A-K-T-E-R, after K-A-R-A. -A. And please leave all of your questions in the comments below. Everyone, please welcome Kara and Paul. Thank you, Caitlin. Yay. Hi, Kara. 
I'm so glad she explained character actor because for some reason when I saw it, I didn't get it like, said it actor. It could be like character. Uh, yeah, oh, oh, multiple oh, levels. Oh. <laughs> How you doing? Hey, Mars, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Happy to have you here. I saw your show last night. Wow. It was so like you're still very fresh in my mind. Wow. And then it's like I just um, made you appear in front of me. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it was opening night. It was opening so, how, night. How was it? How are things going? I thought it was, it's it, it's wonderful. It's like a dream cast and a yeah, dream it's a great cast of theater playwright, actors. dream director. It's mm -hmm. just like everybody's just in this beautiful like thing together, and we're just doing it. Yeah, opening night was really sweet too. It was yeah. like a beautiful audience, really warm. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you Paul. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> really great. And it's at uh, Stage 2, Manhattan Theatre Club Stage 2 at yeah. City Center, underneath City Center, basically, which is such a cool space. It is it's super so intimate cool. It's like, that, it's like that old school black box, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, really intimate space, very, very intimate space. So it's like, yeah, that's all I got to say about that. I was, I was going to go keep on talking. It's all right. It didn't have you can talk about words, intimacy. It's okay. Know? So let's talk <laughs> about this play. So Jeff Augustine's the playwright, right? Yes. Um, the New Englanders. Let's set it up. You, you, we gotta talk about this girl you play. I know. Because so where we are, where are we? We're in the heart of New England somewhere. We're in the where heart of there's New England porch? somewhere. There's the porch. There's a school. There's uh -huh. a Chuck E. Cheese. I don't want to give too <laughs> much. Cheese. I don't want to give too much right. away because I feel like you know the elements of surprise really yep. kind of take you. You know, makes you start mm -hmm. thinking other things of like what your expectation was in uh -huh. the very beginning. I. How did you feel when when certain things went down? Were you thinking that it was going a certain no, way? No, 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 no. Like, it definitely took like, me. It took me. Yeah. It took me places. Yeah. But you, um, you're a teenage girl mm -hmm. in the show. Mm -hmm. uh, what's her name? Her name is Issa. Right. And she has been raised by um, two dads, dads mm -hmm. a gay couple, mm -hmm. um, and they are played by. Tego Bouger. Yeah, and I, I wanted you to say his name because I wanted to. I didn't Bougier. want to say it wrong. I know he, you say it really. Bougier, the I knew OG you were going to say it really good. Yeah, you were going to really. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Patty Breen, Patrick Breen. Patrick Breen. Patrick Breen. Patty Breen. Patty Breen. <laughs> Yo, those. I those. I love them so much. They are. It's just a, a delight. Well, they're your pleasure. dads. They're my dads. They're, they're your dads. like my dads, my actual fathers. And honestly. so they're an interracial couple. Yeah. Obviously in Connecticut, mm -hmm. raising you. Mm -hmm. Um. And how is she doing? How is this girl doing? She. Where's she at? She has a lot of things in well, her head. Well, you know, she's it's last year of school. She's going mm -hmm. to college next year. Um, she's trying to figure life out. She's obsessed with Lauren Hill. Oh, okay. You know, we, no, and, stop. Oh, the yeah. The miseducation of Lauren Hill. Let's uh, talk that, about it. Let's talk I about it. I was obsessed. This came out. Were in, you obsessed with this? Oh show? my God, huge. So, oh, so snap. Um, yeah. So that That's album cool. came out in 1998. It's an amazing album. Look it up. But it played. I was so excited. It played like a big part in the show huge. and in you and in you. But then I was looking at your Instagram. Yes. And you actually posted about that album like two years ago. Were you doing like a reading of it or something? No. Because you posted a whole thing about how well, that album changed your life. This that album is that why you got life. cast? They were like, oh, okay, well, she should be in this play. <laughs> no, actually, you, well, I could talk a little bit about that, and I, I obviously want to get back to the play too. But the album did change my life, and I remember um, Cameo Brown, a teacher, uh -huh. came into our homeroom and literally wrote all of the lyrics out to do op that thing uh, on in a, in a composition like a composition notebook paper, yep. and then wrote all of the lyrics hand, handwritten and then uh, copied that for the entire class and we went through that song Wow. So like we all knew the lyrics That's to amazing. this song, but That's it amazing. was such it's such an uplifting song. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like yeah. no, like you need to learn, you need to know better. Go yeah. live your life, but know that everybody's about that thing. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna have yeah. get to so, but so, city. I, I, those songs were all songs. so like yeah, it's a great album. Epic. But your character. My character is obsessed with Lauren yeah. Hill, and she is this beautiful black figure that it's probably like the first time that I'm really attaching mm. myself to icon or I, yeah. that idolatry, that that I, that sense of of like I can be like this black woman because mm -hmm. I've never seen that represented in, in my world. Your New England life, right. right? Yeah. And so you know, there's this. It's a really there's so many themes in the New Englanders. You can kind of hold on to whatever rings true to you. But for Issa, I feel as if there's this big old microscope on her and she's also ignored. And what is that? I mean, and it's very, I can say, 
I don't want to speak for for all people mm -hmm. of color, but to be other in the world can be very. Um, it's a weird experience because people ignore you and then you speak and then you're dangerous. And like, mm -hmm. so what is that operating when you're the only person of color in a town your whole life? Right. Um, and being raised by your black and white father, but really um, identifying with your black father and then you're out in the world and then how, who, like what, what happens? You know, so it's, I, I, I honestly wanted to hear how you felt at the end because my mother was like, I don't like her. She was like, I don't like, she's dangerous. That girl's dangerous. And I was like, ooh, okay. I yeah. felt really conflicted about her. Yeah, yeah. how yeah, did the, you feel there, about there, her? I, I did, I was kind of like wondering, what, what, where is this? I would love to see like the 10 years later story. The 10 years and, later story of yeah. Lisa Stein. But you know she has this loving, um, these loving fathers, right? You totally. know, what I mean? so she definitely has this great support. Totally support, but she's definitely uh, acting out a bit yeah. in the show. Yeah, I mean, but also it's really sort of a story about a trouble. I mean, not troubled per se, but a teenager who's going through many changes, very yeah. scary changes, and everybody remembers like the time that the year before they had to go away, or mm -hmm. the year before they turned eighteen, and mm -hmm. the year before it was like. Holy, 17 was a year. Right. How long have you been in New York? I grew up here. Oh, you did? Where'd I'm you grow up? I was born and raised in Harlem. Oh. I'm a Harlemite. You're like, I'm legit. I'm legit. I was born in Harlem Hospital on 135th and Lenox. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I was. I'm first generation American, so both of my parents are from Belize, Central America. Oh, okay. They're still here in uh -huh. New York. We talked about this. We just talked about this. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, uh -huh. yeah. But I'm a Harlemite. Oh, cool. And so where did you go to school? Where did you, where did you study acting? Did you study acting? What's, yeah, what's you your know, story? I got a big up. I really just want to big up Labyrinth Theater Company. Oh, Those are my people. They, they nurture me. Oh, that's why you gave the hands up for Daphne. Oh, Daphne's that Daphne, Labyrinth. Yeah. That's, Daphne. La that's Labyrinth yeah. family. <laughs> Labyrinth queen. family. Yeah. Oh, my God. Daphne Ruben Vega is a queen. I agree. I um, love her. I adore all of my Labyrinth family. Mm -hmm. And uh, they. I, I can say that... They gave me a platform to uh, appreciate my artistry, mm -hmm. you know, as an artist, as a contributor, as a collaborator, um, and and I just love them very, very much. Yeah, word. 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 So what are what are your goals? Like, what what do you um? What, if, there's a vision board. There's a vision board comes into oh, play yes. in the show, right? Yeah. Because she's and asked. All, she's all asked to fill. A moment with that, it's, right? it's, it's a topic. The vision board. Yes. Uh, and your character's not a big fan of the vision board. Well, my character's not a big fan of like terminologies, right? Yeah. And so it's like, you know, you you know, when you when you do watch the play, when you do come and see it. Um, Playing through October 20th at Manhattan Theater Club Stage much. 2. That's right, Paul. And, <laughs> well, when you do come and see it, you know, Issa just has a lot of big ideas about the way that we choose to give language over to young people mm. when they're building their lives. And then what do they do with that? It's like you're telling us how to live. You're telling us how to be. You're telling us how to get in trouble. You're telling us how to be successful or what is the what is success? You mm -hmm. know, why are we not breathing life into our own brains instead of like just following this sort of construct of how to navigate the system right. or how to navigate the world, right. you know? And so Isa is really sort of exploring I am exploring those ideas and and facing the people who my immediate people, my fathers, my 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 teacher, um, and really asking the important questions is like, what are you? Are you actually happy? Mm. Are you actually living the mm -hmm. life you envisioned? Right. Because I don't see this world, this basic, this basic ass world. I don't see it for myself. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that Issa is just a she's a she's more than a dreamer. She's more than a visionary. Mm -hmm. You know, she just doesn't really think things through at the end of the day, but you should definitely come and see that for yourself too. But what about you as an actress? What kind mm -hmm. of things excite you? What kind of stories do you want to tell? And oh man. Well, definitely this story because I feel like it just is uh like I said before, just a really um the in-depth nature of being brown in America. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, when we're in a lot of white spaces, it's really sur for survival. And there's a lot of times where we are the only ones, mm -hmm. like this room. 
you know and that, i mean just right. just just yeah, the yeah. truth of the matter is so it's like what does that do when that's the norm? Mm -hmm. What is that? What actually happens when that's the norm? When you're sort of ostracized, but also there's a big old microscope right on you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. trying to track every wrong move that you make. Mm -hmm. And and also sometimes you ask the question after the New Englanders, like, if this was a white boy, what what what? How would you feel? Right. Mm -hmm. And that's like a really right. deep question. Yeah, how yeah. would you actually mm -hmm. feel? Right. I don't the know. Same actions. Right. Yeah. I you get know? that. I mean, that's a question that I have. But By the way, the play is also really funny. The play is very There's funny. a lot of humor. It's I, very, yeah. Jeff Augustine is very smart. Sahim Ali directed this, and he's like just a dream to work with. Very clear in what he wants to see. He's a visionary as well. And um, I'm just so grateful to have just been able to be a part of just a beautiful team, you mm -hmm. know? Um, I want to ask you something random. Yeah, sorry. You do, you've done voiceovers for the oh, VMAs, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? Can you give me a little sample of like a oh VMA voiceover? Oh my God. Voiceover? Well, then, well, can I read something though? Well, I mean, because it's because it's like coming back, like, like just say like after the break, Beyonce will be on or something. I don't know. You can. Oh my it. God. Because, okay. So can I set this up for you though? Yes. yes. Of course. <laughs> so it's, it's a very, it's a very uh, intense, like on demand kind of job you're doing it live. you're like live doing it live the, so it's so where like are you? you're so i'm up. like in a i'm like outside of the stadium or wherever right. it is and i'm like in a trailer and i'm being conne i'm connected to everybody your, like, and i'm like pajamas i'm like I could, your be after party I could be wearing my pajamas if i wanted to <laughs> 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 but anyway so so you like you basically are the voice like you have throughout to throughout wow. and so but you Welcome have a button to, to yeah, yeah it's like Welcome. To, uh, that's not even it. Give me a sample. Uh, 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 it's like, uh, well, this year I was so in my vo my own voice. So it was like, it was like, welcome to the 2019 MTV Video Music Awards. Coming to the stage live, Beyonce. <laughs> Beyonce. I mean, well, I didn't say it like that, but it was I like, love it. you know, it's like I love coming to the stage, skills. Kevin Hart. And then one <laughs> one one year it was like coming to the stage. It's Kevin Hart. <laughs> And Tiffany Haddish. So you, you mix it up a little bit. You have Sometimes a little fun I with do. it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's great because voiceovers like very. It's like very intimate. Like you can also go very casual. Right, with right. It, you know. Yeah. It's no, but so I love that you were really lit this year. That's a good one. I was lit. I was lit. <laughs> I was on fire. Yes. Hey, Caitlin. Yes. What are the people online? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. There's people online. Of course. Sure. Yeah. Oh, so yes. Jordan wants to know. You're working with such great actors in this yes. show. Oh, What's my God. the biggest lesson that you've learned from them? So, so, Adam Langdon just came on board, and I'm, he's he's been there, but he just came on board, and he um, has been, I've just learned, like, you can just really just go, you just got to take a dive in, you mm -hmm. just got to trust yourself. Mm -hmm. He got a call to come in to replace an actor, Oh. and he got a call, and, uh, like, what like say it's eleven o'clock, be at the theater at two o'clock. He picked up his phone, he got to the theater at two, he got he went through each scene twice for him, all wow. of his scenes. You have a lot of scenes with him. Well, I have like uh, three scene four scenes with yeah, him or something yeah. like that, three scenes with him. And he got and then he was on the stage at seven thirty. Same day? Same day, book in hand, got an applause after his first scene. Was he getting those laughs? I was gonna he say was because he's awesome. really funny. He's brilliant. He's brilliant. <laughs> he's so I've good. learned. I've I've watching watching Patty Breen, and Adam Langdon on stage because I try to get like yeah, change fast and like just just watch them. I'm like backstage, like <laughs> with the stage manager Katie. I'm like, oh snap, they are just on fire. <laughs> and you can just see like there's these really beautiful calcul not even calculated and it's probably so effortless for them but yeah. they just have this comedy that just is so yeah. uh, I can't it's even describe funny. it. Yeah. And then working with Crystal Finn. Mm -hmm. First of all, the entire cast, Javier Munoz. Yes. Oh my Javi. god. I, I don't have any scenes with him but Javi is just uh, he's he's a boss out yeah. there. You know what I'm saying? And then and then Crystal Finn working with Crystal Finn. I'm obsessed with Crystal Finn. You are? I'm obsessed with her. Some I know it doesn't seem like that. No, I was going to say, they're but on I'm, stage. <laughs> they're on stage chemistry. It takes, it takes everything <laughs> in my power to not laugh because she'll be like, is this a camera on me? She'll be like, she'll look, she'll be like, like, you know, like, it's like this very like, and then I'm like trying so hard to just 
<laughs> Keep, Keep it, it together. together. Keep it you together. Know? And then Tegel just is so giving. He's just so generous. P- P- Patty and Tegel, they're just so generous. You really love these people. I love these What are you going to do after so October much. 20th? Cry. <laughs> cry a little. You know, cry. <laughs> You know, say goodbye and cry. <laughs> Let's just see you later. See That's showbiz. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like what do I learn yeah. though? Did I answer the question? I don't even know. Yep. But yeah. I just you I learned, learned so much. From them. I you learned, learned a, stuff. A, lot. a lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. <laughs> All right. Answer. This is a fun question. Ziggy wants to know Love your co-stars name. get to eat ice cream on stage. Oh, what yeah, would your cream. dream ice cream topping be if you got to do the same? <laughs> Gummy bears. Ooh. She knew that. You knew that. <laughs> you went right there. Gummy bears. Gummy bears on ice some... cream, really? I've never done that. Yeah. I know people do it, but I don't do it. Gummy bears and then maybe some Reese's Pieces bits. Oh, that's that's mm. more me. Yeah, that's you know more <laughs> that's more oh, my yeah. flavor. I love oh, yeah. that. <laughs> Amazing. We can do one more question. Okay. And Kevin wants to know what convert if you were to meet Issa in person, oh. what conversation would you guys have? I am Issa. <laughs> 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 no, I think I have conversations with Issa every day. Hmm. And I think that um, Issa has definitely I, I don't think I'm gonna answer your question per se, mm-hmm. like yeah. like in the way you asked it. Um, but I know for a fact that Issa is a part of my psyche and like, mm-hmm. and it's really about, it's just very self-explorative, like what diving into Issa's world, it taught me so much about myself and the things that I was possibly holding mm. or, you know, anger in some sort of way or like displacement it's really kind of like displacement of energy right Mm, mm -hmm. and what she how she kind of reacts to the world it's like i'm this there's this inner cry that i'm now i'm trying to figure out how where to put it Mm -hmm. you know and energy never dies it goes somewhere and so you have to find a very healthy mental health mentally healthy way to do that. Mm-hmm. I think I have conversations with Issa every day and I and I couldn't even get into what what were what what I possibly can ask her because I feel like it's a conversation with myself mm-hmm. and my younger self. When you're walking around the streets in New York, do you ever see like a girl and go like, oh she's like Issa? She's like, like, do you ever like, sp- like, oh, like yeah. pick up things from real people? Oh totally. Right? Well, for revolving cycles, I mean like the young younger kids were everywhere. I, I do think that I was a young Issa. Mm-hmm. I do think that, you know, I I mean, not to that you right. know, right. extreme, but but I do think that you know there's 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 those dark energies that live in all of us, or mm-hmm. and the and the bright. Yeah, you know, it's sort of like how do you access? How do What's you access? What's your favorite New England state? This is the most important question. Oh my god, <laughs> that's really why you had to do why you had to go and do that, huh? No. I don't want you to pick favorites. It's fine. I can't do that. They're all your children. They're all my children. <laughs> <laughs> You're that. a New Yorker. I'm a New Yorker. Yeah. 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 I was a New Englander turned a New Yorker. So Where are you from? Yeah. Connecticut. True. I got out. True. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I love it now. Uh, um, check out Kara Young in the New Englanders Manhattan Theater Club. Stage 2. It's stage City two. Center. On stage 50, 2. West 55th Street. There's a city bike station right there. I grabbed a bike after the show. It's good to help people. You did? Yeah. That's really good. You had to go to the opening night party. I had to go walk my dog. <laughs> Kara, it was nice meeting you. Really, Thanks really for coming nice in. Nice to meet you, too. Go Thank see you. New Englanders. It's playing through October 20th. Stage two. Hey, Caitlin, <laughs> why don't you take us out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single weekday here on Facebook. You can listen to us wherever we get your podcast by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. We talk to Corey Jacoma all about Beautiful, the Carol King musical.